So our third paper of this afternoon is entitled Knowledge Transfer for Melanoma Screening with Deep Learning. Okay, thank you very much, good afternoon. So, uh, this investigation, the motivation for a bit is that to work with deep learning, everyone is doing transfer learning for all tasks, but for medical tasks, uh, this is especially important because our data sets are small and uh, deep learning is very greedy in terms of data. If you have too small data, the networks don't converge like they should. So, uh, for particularly just for the task of melanoma screening, when you see the, the literature, uh, and the literature on deep learning for this task is, is fairly recent, you see that a majority of the paper do transfer instead of uh, training from scratch. I'm, I'm actually impressed that training for, from scratch works at all uh, because it's really challenging to, to make the, the, those, those networks to converge with the small data sets. So, just a, a quick reminder, I don't, I don't think I... I well, for the deep learners, I, I don't think I have to show that, but for the non-deep learners, that might be helpful. The thing is that uh, deep learning, you have those several layers. It's a stacked representation when you have uh, one linear model on top of another linear model, on top of another linear model, etc., etc., and you have a, a few nonlinear uh, layers in between. Uh, the thing that was found is that the lower layers, the layers which are closer to the representation, are fairly general and they get more specialized as you get closer to the output decision. So why not to reuse the lower layers? Why you, if they are so general, you can just copy and paste them from one task to the other. So even among the very different tasks, for example, from ImageNet, that is general classification of classes like uh, uh, Alaskan Dog and Grand Piano, you can, you can really reuse this kind of model even for very specialized tasks like melanoma detection. Uh, and nowadays we don't just copy and paste the layers, it's more sophisticated than that. What we do is that we initialize the model instead of randomly initialize the layers. We initialize the layers with the old model and then we retrain the model uh, in the new task. This is what is called fine tuning. So when you when you see the expression fine tuning, this is what it means. So uh, the main questions here were to, to quantify what is the actual impact of transfer learning and how much uh, that procedure of fine tuning, that procedure of instead of just copying and freezing the weights, letting them evolve, what difference that, that would make. And another question that we, we were very interested in at the time is that what, what would be the impact of transferring, instead of transferring from ImageNet, that is a general purpose data set, what would be the impact of transferring from a, another medical uh, test? At the time uh, that Kaggle competition from, for diabetic retinopathy with around 100,000 images for iPhone images was just available, so, so it became just possible to, 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 to ask this question. And a, a, a bonus question, a small question that we also were asking is, what the hell to do with the carcinomas? <laughs> this is a complex question that we asked when we were doing binary classification in skin lesion. This, this is an answer that I, I still don't know how to answer, but if you are doing binary classification of the skin lesions, what is the community recommended procedure? Is it melanoma versus non-melanoma, and then you just put the carcinomas in the negative class? Do you draw out the carcinomas altogether and just pretend they don't exist? Uh, this, is the, this is what we did in the, in the, the, the protocol number two. Uh, do you consider three classes as the carcinoma as a third lesion, or do you put carcinomas and melanomas together as a malignant class? This is something that I would like to have feedback from the, from the community. <coughs> so, uh, 
the experiments we had uh, at baseline, the baseline was to pick up uh, a DNN. In our case, it was, for most experiments, DGGM, which is a fairly, fairly small network, uh, and training it from scratch, and comparing it with several, uh, several possibilities of, find, of transfer learning. Uh, one of them was transferring from diabetic retinopathy to melanoma, so the source data set of knowledge is diabetic retinopathy, and the target test is melanoma. The other one is ImageNet to melanoma, so source data set, ImageNet target, target data set melanoma, and finally, the attempt to do a double transfer. Start with the uh, ImageNet, move towards uh, diabetic retinopathy, and finally do a final training on melanoma. So just to, uh, so you can take a look, those are the data sets which are present in the in this paper. Uh, most experiments, all almost all experiments, are on the first data set, the third and the last. So the the Related data set is this retinopathy data set from, from Cairo, and the, the big unrelated data set is the MeshNet. The second data set, of course, you know, is the Isaac uh, Challenge data set of 2016. We used it in just one experiment to show that, that our models are not uh, far from the state of the art. So, the main results are here. <laughs> And uh, there are mostly no surprises, and there is one surprise. The no surprise is that the transfer helps. Uh, it helps quite a lot, and fine tuning helps. So fine tuning really makes a difference. So just copying and pasting the weights is not enough. You have to initialize the network with the weights and then retrain it in the new task, that's what makes the difference. The surprise here, somewhat a surprise, is that transferring from a related uh, data set, at least uh, in this limited uh, context, was worse than transferring from a general data set like ImageNet. Our reasoning was that although uh, diabetic retinopathy is not uh, the same thing as melanoma, uh, if you are training from ImageNet, you are looking for global structures and large scale structures. You are looking for a piano. <laughs> and if you are training on these English data sets, you are looking for globules and the regression structures and vascularizations, which are very fine detail, very, very small scale structures. And that's, that's true as well for diabetic retinopathy. You are looking for uh, small, oh my God, I forgot the name, uh, small white lesions in the, in the retina and uh, small vascularizations in the retina, which are sometimes tiny. So our hope, or what we think at the time, is that if the network thrives on retinopathy, it should also thrive on melanoma detection. But clearly, uh, at least for, for, for those two data sets, that was not the case. Uh, the, the transfer works better on a huge big data set, even if it's a general purpose data set, than on a special purpose data set. What was more surprising indeed, and what is more unsettling, and I really don't consider that result completely final, is that the double transfer learning was also worse. So doing the transfer learning from ImageNet to uh, diabetic retinopathy, and then moving to melanoma, was worse than simply going from ImageNet to melanoma. And the, that, for me, uh, Unexplainable. I don't, I don't. I don't know what's happening here. The one explanation that I have, but I'm always very, very suspicious of post hoc explanations. So don't believe too much in, in my next phrase. My possible explanation is that after the network specializes 
you cannot unspecialize it back. So moving from a general task to a special task is possible, but moving from a special task to another one is much harder. But again, this is a post hoc uh, explanation, so I'm, I'm not very comfortable in, with it. Well, the fact is that the best results is just going from ImageNet to, to, to melanoma. And, okay, a few other results is that, of course, using a deeper network, in the case uh, a VGG16 is better than a smaller uh, network, in the case VGGM. Uh, one interesting result is that on the Atlas data set, we have a subjective, uh, appointed by the doctors, lesion difficulty. And we can see that for low difficulty diagnosis, the results are quite good, but for high difficulty diagnosis, the network is no better than random, than, than random choice. So this is something also that I'd like to have to discuss with the community, is how we, we could use this kind of subjective uh, notion of the diagnosis difficulty to focus on, on the hard lesions. Uh, finally, just for reference, there is a comparison with uh, ImageNet 2016. Uh, and the results are in the ballpark of performance of, uh, of, of, of the challenge. And those are the conclusions that I already told you. So transfer learning is a good idea, finding tuning is a good idea. Uh, deeper models work better. And I, it, it appears that adaptations from specific data sets are very complicated. So just a shameless plug, <laughs> if you have, if you weren't uh, yesterday at the Isaac Challenge, we had the presentation and uh, and the participation there. So please uh, uh, take a look if you if you want. And I have some copies of our paper and uh, in both uh, sessions. If you need material to to the long trip back in the plane, get on the plane. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> hey, great work. Um, I thought your explanation of why the additional data uh, made a lot of sense that you were specializing on a particular task and then the patterns and features the network is learning for that thing aren't as generalizable. I think that's a good explanation. My question is um, okay, so although when you jump to another data set and you specialize further, then your performance drops, I wonder if you take those two networks, the one that was trained directly from ImageNet, and the one that was trained directly from the smaller network, and the one that had the double transfer, and you combined all the prediction outputs, what happens? Are they learning things, something that's complementary, and even though one is performing lower, combining it with the other one will push up the performance further? Did you try that experiment? Well, we didn't try that, and that was a, a serious overlook because we should have, uh, have taken a look at that. I, I'm almost sure that the results will improve uh, at least a little bit because uh, in, in, in the learning, just running the same network twice and combining <laughs> the results improve a little bit. I don't know if the results will improve a lot. This, this is something that is worth uh, experiencing. Yeah, I'm not necessarily convinced that they definitely will improve because I've seen it go both ways, at least in our own experience. Okay. I, I've learned not to make assumptions and not to answer questions by doing the experiment okay. and finding out. <laughs> But it would be interesting to see uh, if you saw improvement or not. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It would be interesting if there would be some sort of theoretical prediction that could be done there. So you could get some idea of how well it would work or the bounding mm -hmm. that would work. Uh, I think that would be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry? So if you could do some sort of theoretical prediction that you mm -hmm. could make some measurements of the data and then have some sort of theoretical model that give you some idea of mm -hmm. how the network would perform. So between, between two tasks? Yes. You could yeah. have a model for the test. That's, that, that's interesting. Because what happens here is a lot of these things, you sort of do the experiment, you make the observation. Yeah. And then you got to figure out well, what's the insight. Yeah. And that sort of bothers me a little bit. So. But I think that the, 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 the hypothesis I'm putting here is that moving through specializations is hard. Yeah. And the, that's a theoretical prediction that we, we could validate uh, on a completely unrelated task. For example, now let's try to classify car models. Right. And move to birds, bird, sure. birds, and let's see if the transfer is worse than moving directly from ImageNet to sure. car models. If if that's not true, then the hypothesis is broken. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, I just had a quick question. Uh, when you're doing these various strength of learning experiments, uh, can you comment on just what the actual objective values are and training loss and that sort of thing? I'm sorry? Uh, so when you're doing these experiments, uh, I mean, if you look at just the training loss or the value of the objective and that sort of thing, I mean, are they converging to more or less the same training loss? I mean, is this basically failing because it's yeah, a challenge in the optimization that, or it's actually learning that, different that, solutions? That's that why I think that the results are not definitive because training those networks involves a lot of craftsmanship. And so, and the, this were not ex experiments that I run myself, so those are students' experiments, and the, the students have sworn that they were very, very, very careful about that. But it, there is a lot of subjective choice in the end. For example, okay, the fair procedure is to run each experiment for the same number of adults. The fair procedure is to wait until each uh, validation procedure drops to a certain validation error, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So th there is a th there is a number of uh, procedures that you should run before you, you make a final conclusion, and uh, it's it's not a, it's it's hard with deep learning. Well, I think a very simple like uh, baseline would basically just be you know you're training the same network architecture, right? It's just yes. a matter of how you're yes. initializing, right? So you can just see what the, the objective value is at the end of whatever training you do, right? But th that's what we're doing. Yeah, and so I was, I was, I guess my question is, I mean, if you if you have a network that does not, uh, so these are all testing errors that you're showing, right? These are all testing errors, right? So that's that's a function of how well the solution you find generalizes to the test data. Yes. A simple question is just. Do they do the same on training data? So you're finding equivalent solutions. From I'm not sure. Functions. I'm not sure because for, uh, because I'm not sure that this was the criterion to stop. I would risk to say no because, for example, in the image net, you can get up to 95 percent to the top five error. It's and the the, the cost function is, is is one cost function. Then when you move to diabetic retinopathy, you have uh, another error and the cost function is different and then when you move to melanoma you have uh, much lower errors and the cost function is yet different so i don't think that the criterion is to get each of the source networks up to the same uh, cost okay we're going to have to move on we're really we're really <laughs> late so maybe you guys can take this offline sure. all right thank you thank very much. you thank you very much